Thank you to everyone joining us today from across the country and around the world. I'm Alexa Cardone, Manager of Community Success here at Conscious Capitalism, Inc. On behalf of the CCI team, we appreciate you taking the time to learn and grow in the community with us. Today, we are excited to welcome one of our Senior Leader Network members, Mark Mears, to share insights from his recently published book, The Purposeful Growth Revolution, Four Ways to Grow from Leader to Legacy Builder. Before we get started, a few housekeeping announcements. As many of you know, Conscious Capitalism is a philosophy that emphasizes the human nature of business and is a movement of business leaders from around the world working to change the practice and perception of capitalism as a means to elevate humanity. Conscious Capitalism Inc. is a nonprofit organization dedicated to catalyzing that movement by creating learning opportunities like today's session, as well as build systems of support for practicing conscious capitalists through our senior leader network membership and engagement with our local chapters. Several times a month, CCI offers virtual gatherings as a way for the community to see how this philosophy takes shape in the leadership journeys and the business practices of those in our network. Today's gathering will run for about 45 minutes. Mark will present for about 25 minutes, and then we'll transition to audience questions during the last 10 to 15 minutes of our session. We have the chat feature available for this session, so please feel free to say hello, let us know where you are joining from, and share your thoughts throughout today's gathering. After Mark's presentation, we will invite you to ask any questions. Please note you should use the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen to submit questions for Mark, and we'll try to get as many as we can during our time together. If you have any technical questions or issues, please email us at info at consciouscapitalism.org. Now, I am thrilled to introduce Mark Mears. Mark is a number one best-selling author, keynote speaker, consultant, and visionary business leader. He has a significant track record of building shareholder value. He has driven innovation and profitable growth among world-class, high-profile brands, such as PepsiCo, Pizza Hut, McDonald's, Frito-Lay, JCPenney, NBC Universal, and the Cheesecake Factory. Today, Mark serves as the Chief Growth Officer for Leaf Growth Ventures, LLC, a consulting firm helping individuals, teams, and organizations find purpose in fulfilling their true growth potential while making a positive, lasting difference in the world. Mark, I will hand it over to you now and join you later to answer some questions from the audience. Thanks, Alexa. Let me see if I can uh, share my screen here and get uh, this party started. All right. Well, here we are. I uh, really appreciate this opportunity. Uh, Alexa and Mike, thanks so much for um, allowing me to come on as uh, this is my favorite topic. And so we're going to have um, the next 25, 30 minutes, a pretty wild ride. So I invite you to uh, strap on your seat belts and, and get ready because we've got a lot of good stuff to talk about. And today, um, you know, Alexa touched on it, but the, the, the world's gotten crazy and we have a lot of issues that um, governments themselves can't solve, uh, religious organizations by themselves can't solve, uh, but businesses have an opportunity to do so. And uh, we're gonna talk about how to unpack the four tenets of conscious capitalism, which are higher purpose, stakeholder orientation, conscious leadership, and conscious culture. And as Alexa man, uh, messaged uh, in, a, in a few minutes ago, she said, hey, we're all about elevating humanity through business. So I don't care what side of the aisle you're on or what your belief system is, but I think we can all get behind that, right? Well, I've developed a model that we're gonna talk a little bit about and it's all about growth. I'm a growth junkie. I love growth in all of its forms, personal, professional, spiritual, relational. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that in a minute, but today we're gonna to break up my talk in four different sections, which I call seeds for growth. The first is my thesis that the, pur the purposeful growth revolution is definitely on. And then the second is I'll make a case for why purposeful growth matters to both individuals and companies. And then third, I'm gonna share with you a model for purposeful growth that I've developed that you can read about in the book that uh, Alexa mentioned. And then finally, what's most important is how do we align all of our stakeholders for purposeful growth? Are you ready? Let's get into it. The first seed for growth is this idea that the purposeful growth revolution is on. 
and I love me some Beatles, so anyway, I can slide them into a, a, a PowerPoint presentation I try to, but really well said is this idea of, you say you want a revolution? Well, you know, we all wanna change the world. Well, the good news is we can change the world. And I think about this word revolution. And as I was digging into the dictionary, I found actually three separate but related definitions. The first one is an uprising of the people. And if you think about uh, throughout history, revolutions have changed governments, uh, have changed cultures, and, and they usually come up from the people feeling oppressed. And so I'm gonna link this to our world of work that we're in today. People want more than just working at a job, punching in nine to five, getting paid every other week. They wanna fulfill a purpose. Well, why do I say that? Well, I call it the great repurposing. I don't believe in this idea of the great resignation because I believe that the word resign has two meanings. One is you've resigned altogether and you've quit. Uh, the other is maybe uh, even worse is you've resigned yourself to an unsatisfying status quo and you've quit, but stayed. I guess the kids are calling it quiet quitting these days, but I call it the great repurposing. And I say that because back in uh, January of 2022, the Sloan School of Management at MIT spoke with over 34 million people who left the workforce during COVID, asking them a simple question, why? The number one reason by tenfold over the second highest reason was toxic work environment. And interestingly enough, compensation didn't come up until number 16 on the list. It's as if people said, I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. And I really look at this idea of COVID giving us a timeout, a timeout to really uh, get deep and, and, and and introspective of what and who really matters most in our life. And so we go from this idea of just a gig to now the creation of the gig economy, which had started before COVID, but now has amplified it. So let's talk a little bit about this idea of who. You know, Simon Sinek uh, uh, is a brilliant um, thought leader and influencer, came up with this idea of Start With Why several years ago. But I believe you missed something really important. Instead of starting with why, I believe we should start with who. And in fact, you think about who in this four circle Venn diagram, and I think there's four different categories. There's spiritual, there's relational, there's personal, and there's professional. And when we go into the workplace, we're all four of those realms. And I believe that when you focus on who is most important, and, not, and who you serve is really even more important than your why. And a matter of fact, it leads you to your why. But we're all whole people. We're not just employees with an ID number. We're not workers. We're team members. And we're going to talk a little bit about how and why words matter as we walk through today's presentation. The second definition of revolution I found was a radical change in the status quo. And we're talking about going from incremental growth to transformational growth. And when we think about it throughout history, there have been catalytic events that have disrupted the status quo. And you think about war or disease or famine or possibly discovery, invention and innovation. You think about where we were back in when, when, when compu you know, computation had started and you think about where we are today. And you think about that uh, smartphone that is in the palm of your hand has more power than what all the computers combined had when they put a man on the moon over 50 years ago. So instead of creeping incremental growth, I call it step function change growth because what happens when you have these types of events, the world's never the same. We don't go backward. You can't put the genie back in the bottle. We move forward with step function change growth. And so we think about now this new kind of world of work. Um, we were all isolated. We all had to stay home from the workplace. And some liked it and some didn't. But I believe, again, there's going to be this new normal and it's going to be a hybrid world. And because of COVID, we come back to this idea of connection. How do we connect as human beings, leveraging high tech and high touch? I can remember all of us back in 2020, the official word we heard everywhere was pivot. 
And the official meme we saw on social media was, uh, you're on mute. And then finally, the official question is, can I share my screen? The world changed based on how we connected with one another. And again, the genie's not going back in the bottle. So how do we work, work together and connect in this new world of work, leveraging the benefits of high tech with the emotional connection, the human connection of high touch? And then finally, the third definition of revolution is a circular orbit around an object. And again, moving us from this idea or myth of work-life balance to this more noble uh, pursuit of purposeful growth. And I think about this idea of the for me generation that has emerged through this time period. It was already moving in this direction with the younger millennials and Gen Z or millennials with the, uh, the two mixed together, right? Um, but this is not the me generation of the 1980s that was kind of popularized by the movie Wall Street with Michael Douglas, who played that villainous character, Gordon Gecko, who said greed is good, all about money and power and narcissism. That's not what I'm talking about here at all. In fact, it's just the opposite. The for me generation has four key traits that I've found, and I think they're very noble. The first one's personalization, get to know me. I'm not just a random collection of ones and zeros. I'm a real life human being with thoughts and motivations and feelings. And the second is customization, make it for me. There's a lot of uh, ways that we you know, customize our meals, we can customize our cars, we can customize everything, but it's also about customizing the workplace. What works for me? I want more flexibility. I want more freedom. I want more autonomy. And, and so I want to customize a work environment that makes it work for me. And then self-expression. Let me be me. Well, self-expression has been around since cave drawings and telling stories around a, a campfire. But today with the advent of social media, people are obviously much more comfortable sharing and expressing themselves. And then finally, connection. Connect with me, but connect with me in a way that's relevant to my life stage and lifestyle. And also connect me to something greater than myself. I want to stand for something. I want to have a purpose that drives me. And I don't want to just go work for a company that cares just about profit. I believe we can get both purpose and profit. The and is really important, purpose and prop. So that's the first seed for growth. The second one is the case for purposeful growth. Now, why it's important is according to the science of purpose, uh, the study that they conducted said individuals with a connection to their purpose experience 63% increase in wealth, leadership, effectiveness, and fulfillment. And there's that word we're going to come back to in a minute. They learn twice as much. They're four times more engaged and get this, are 175% more productive. That's almost worth two people. So the case for purposeful growth in individuals is rock solid, but even more so companies with a connection to their purpose experience higher margins as purposeful firms are 30% more innovative. 73% of customers have stated they will switch to higher purpose brands and spend more money. And they also attract higher levels of retention and tenure, which we know is important. And then finally, 54% of the people reported more fulfilling work relationships, which Gallup has told us for years is really important in building engagement in the workplace. And we know engaged employees are more profitable ones. So the third seed for growth uh, is spot on, and that is the model for purposeful growth and where it came from. Well, ironically, it came from a leaf. And while I don't have the time to tell you the backstory now, you can read it in my book, um, I saw a leaf on the branch of a little fig tree in our backyard in Valencia, California, that was just starting to bud. And in that moment, I got this epiphany that leaf is a natural symbol of growth and rebirth. And it's also where all growth happens from any plant or tree is through the leaf through the magic of photosynthesis, right? For those of us who were not asleep during science in high school. 
Um, but you think about a leaf and it goes through its four seasons. It goes from its bud uh, to its transformational growth in the summer. Uh, and then finally, where it bears fruit uh, in the fall, and then that fig leaf and that fig plant uh, also have the opportunity to scatter seeds, which we'll talk about in a minute. And then, of course, that leaf goes through the regeneration process, and then the cycle continues. So leaf is a natural symbol of growth. But in my mind's eye, I also saw it through the higher power of fours. You know, there is something called the rule of threes. It's been around for a long time. I saw it in a da Dodge Ram truck commercial last year, so I know it's still a thing. But people think that if you just focus on three things, that you'll get to your objective, whatever it may be. Well, I believe now in the higher power of fours. If you think about it, there are four seasons, not three. There are four directions, not three. There are four chambers to the human heart, not three. There are four elements to the atom, the source of all life, not three. And I could go on and on with this foreplay, but you get the idea. So it really manifests itself in my revolutionary four-leaf growth model that, again, I see as this kind of Venn diagram with four intertwined circles. We don't live in a linear world. I don't think we ever have, but today it's much more integrated than ever before. And I thought about that idea of LEAF, and it also occurred to me that it was an acronym, which stands for Leadership, Engagement, Accountability, and Fulfillment, that are four integrated processes that I've found help individuals, teams, and organizations find purpose in fulfilling their true growth potential. So let's talk about how this metaphor of a LEAF and this acronym come together. So you think about leadership represents the seeds and the roots of any plant. You have to have uh, a strong root system, right? Well, that fig tree in my backyard in Valencia only knows how to be a fig tree. And so the idea of you know, getting its roots established helps provide alignment. And in a business world, I see four C's as important in leadership. Clarity, moving you from purpose to priorities, connection from priorities to plans communication from plans to people, and a commitment, getting them to go from the people to performance. All of that is important around alignment, just like you need alignment with any plant or tree. And now you can't just have that or you'll just have a stump. So you need the trunk and the branches and the system of nourishment. In Spanish, it's called savia, which translates to lifeblood. Well, what's the lifeblood of any organization? It's people. So if you think about engagement as a trunk in the branches, in the idea of uh, the workplace, engagement of the people represents a total commitment of one's heart, head, hands, and habits. How do you move them from purpose to motivation? How do you get them from motivation to mindset and from mindset to development and from development to mastery, all that leads to the end goal of empowerment? We know that empowered employees are better they're uh, more committed, they stay longer, they work harder, and they have a sense of ownership in the outcome. Empowerment is what we want to work toward. But even that's not enough, because to what end? Now we talk about accountability. The accountability revolution is now the, 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 the achievement of your stated goals. It's the leaf and the fruit of that particular plant. It's outcomes, measuring what matters most. It's obstacles, when you adapt, when things don't go your way. It's outliers. Who do we study to get better at what we currently do? And then obsolescence, which we want to avoid through innovation and have a way to look around the corner for future growth. So this is important, but you know what? Where does it all happen and how does it manifest itself? Fulfillment is the care and the feeding and in the organization that would be your culture. It's people getting them from purpose to principles. It's the places now, a hybrid work environment from principles to playgrounds. It's the process that we go through to make big ideas happen and become more productive. And then finally, the performance, ultimately achieving profitability. It's that environment, that nurturing environment that allows a diverse group of people to be at their very best. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. So the fourth seed for growth is alignment. I shared with you earlier that this is really where it all comes together. Um, a good friend of mine, Lynn Zimmerman, who was a rower on the University of Kansas rowing team said, Mark, when all oars are in the water rowing together, it's called the swing effect. 
And so I saw this quote from Patrick Lencioni, who's a, a great uh, business consultant and author, said, if you could get all the people in the organization rowing in the same direction, you could dominate any industry in any market against any competition at any time. Well, that's pretty powerful. And I've been to an Olympic rowing event back in the uh, 96 Olympics in Atlanta. And I just marveled at how these hulking athletes in these little tiny boat were able to smoothly get their uh, bo boats down uh, the, the, the lake. And ultimately the winner was not the biggest and the strongest. It was the one that was most aligned and everybody uh, rowing on cadence. So how do we uh, now link that into our business world? Well, most people think of a brand as one thing. It's not. There are four dimensions, which I call 4D brands. And we need alignment among all four because it's like when our car tires are out of alignment, we kind of go across the road and, and, and not in a straight line, right? Well, I believe there are four brands that we need to take into consideration, all aligned <clears throat> and revolving around purposeful growth. There's your personal brand, the internal brand, the external brand and the employer brand. Let's take a second to go through each one of them. If you think about this now, similar to the model I just shared with you, leadership, the seeds and the roots, the personal brand represents them. It's who do we serve? It's why do we live and work? Why do we do what we do? What gets us up in the morning? What motivates us? But very first, it talks with who you serve. And then how are you unique? What's your superpower? And what role do you play on the team? And so if you think about this from a communication perspective, the goal is alignment, but you want that person to be able to say, I am fill in the blank. Again, we are whole people. We want a level of diversity of thought and words and actions and ideas to bring to the team. And so the personal brand is important to understand who we are, who we serve, why it's important, how we do it uniquely, and what role do we play in advancing the cause of the enterprise? Well, the internal brand represents the trunk and branches, right? That's our internal brand. That's our executive leadership team, our team members, our business partners, our supplier partners. It's everybody within the ecosystem internally that needs to be empowered and ultimately collectively say, we believe. Well, what do we believe? We move from I to we, what I call going from me go to we growth. And then the third element is our external brand. These are the promises that we make to our customers and clients. This is the outcome, the, the leaf and the fruit. Uh, these might be our investors or shareholders, or I believe very importantly, our communities and the world. So what media, what messaging, what promises are we making so that the end result can be achievement, but that people say, wow, you really walk the talk. You're not just out there saying one thing and doing another. We know with purpose, that could be called purpose washing, or in the sustainability uh, world, it may be called greenwashing. You have to walk the talk, and what you believe, you must deliver, and that builds trust in your brand. And then finally, your employer brand. The employer brand represents the culture. Who are we prospecting to join our firm? The recruiters that we use to help ferret out the right best candidates, our own media that talks about why someone would want to come. It's our website, it's our social media, it's our digital, whatever we use to get our story out there as to why our brand is the right fit for you. And then the general public, which is just the perception that your employer brand has. Would you be a brand that someone would want to work for? So the environment is important, but now going back to this idea of what do we want someone to say is I belong here. And again, words matter. I say belong because, you know, DEI has become very, very important. I was old, I'm old enough to remember when it was just diversity and then it was diversity and inclusion. Now it's equity and inclusion. But I think if we don't have the B, we're missing the boat because diversity just gets us uh, a, a seat at the table Equity gives us an equal voice. Inclusion gives us an opportunity to contribute. But if we don't feel a sense of belonging, then we're not going to bring our best. We may not feel comfortable sharing an idea if we think it could be used against us. We may not be comfortable critiquing somebody else because we don't want it to be used against us. We're just happy to be in the room where it happens. Well, we need to let people feel, 
feel they belong. And when they do, they'll be vulnerable and they'll be able to give us their best work. So who's done it well? Those are our four seeds for growth. How does it all come together? Well, Patagonia has been in the news a lot lately. And as I've studied them, I love their mission. Uh, we're in business to save our home planet and they do it. Uh, they walk the talk with their 1% of sales, you know, helping support grassroots organizations, their action works that connects individuals with the passion to get involved in their community, their provisions, which support sustainable food growing and supply chain techniques for uh, environmental safety. And then finally, their worn and wear program, which helps repair damaged products. And I love this ad the, at the bottom. It says, don't buy this jacket. Who, else, who would do that? Uh, but they are doing it to support uh, the, 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 the mission that they claim of saving our home planet. They want to make sure that we don't take anything out of the world that we're not prepared to put back in. And they've been in the news recently by putting together a trust that gives away essentially their company to help support these uh, you know, initiatives that are going to make the planet better. And they walk the talk and they provide a lamppost for the rest of us. But they're not alone. Canva, which is a $40 billion company that started only in 2013, has a goal to empower the world to design. And they've created what they call their two-step plan. It's real simple. Build one of the world's most valuable companies and do the most good we can do. So they came up with six core values, uh, being a force for good, empowering others, pursuing excellence, be a good human, make complex things simple, and you know, go after big goals and make them happen. And they're doing that. They have many different programs. I'm just going to highlight one. It's their 1% pledge to pledge 1% of their profits, 1% of their product, 1% of the team member time, and then 1% of their equity to help bring their mission to life and do the most good. Overall, they're pledging 30% of their company value to doing good. So, for me, another company that walks the talk is Canva, and they're aligning all of those stakeholders around this powerful, purpose-based mission to empower the world to design and do good in the process. And then finally, KPMG, one of the big four um, consulting firms, they have what they call their Higher Purpose Initiative. And unlike many organizations that send their executive team off on an offsite, maybe with a consultant, come back with the values and the purpose and the mission and the vision, and, and, and then like tablets say, this is what we're going to go do. They did it just the opposite. They used a bottom-up approach where they asked their associates to come up with storytelling techniques with a simple question, how does your work positively impact the world? And these consultants had to think about this and tell their stories. And as they did that, they were shared throughout the organization. And this allowed there to be a proper emphasis behind their purpose, but it helped shape their values of integrity, excellence, courage, and together and for better. And this is a consulting firm. So it, sh it shows that no matter what industry you're in, you can make a positive difference in the world by leveraging a shared purpose, and moving up to shared you know, purposeful growth by aligning all four of your stakeholders around that inspiring purpose-based vision, mission, and shared values. So th to kind of summarize, this 4D brand alignment is so vital to success, but let's take a look at the four different key components that every team or organization has and must deal with. The first is aspirational. It must be aligned with your long-term vision. Inspirational, it must be aligned with your daily mission. What do we have to do every day to achieve our long-term vision? And then it has to be operationalized, aligned with our strategic and tactical plans, how we do business, how we make money, and how we give back in the world through our institutional alignment with our shared values. And these four things are vital to the success of any team or organization. Well, what does conscious capitalism care about? Diversity, equity, and inclusion, environment, health and wellness, local communities, education, global poverty and inequity, human rights and standard of living. Those are all things we can get behind. Again, no matter what side of the aisle you're on, what maybe your belief system is, these are things that we all can care about and get behind. And then 
How do we do that? How do we grow from being a leader, which everybody wants to be? And why do I know that? Well, number one, leadership development is a multi-billion dollar industry. But if you Google the words leader or leader, you get 1.7 billion hits. But no one's really talking as much about how do we leave a legacy? And I'm not talking about the legacy you leave after you're dead and gone and you bequeath something to someone. I'm talking about a living legacy. Every single day, how do we invest in our time, mentoring or volunteering? We have a certain amount of time in our day. How are we using it? And I use the word investment on purpose. How do we invest our time in others? And then our talents, what are our superpowers? What are our special gifts that we can give back to the world, both at work and outside of work? And our treasures, you know, we're all blessed to make a living, but what can we give back to causes that we care most about? I just named several of them. And then finally, our triumphs or travails, which are our experiences, both good and bad, that can help others along their growth journey. So for me, this idea of leaving a living legacy is so powerful, and it ladders up to this idea of purposeful growth, because every single day we have an opportunity to wake up and make a difference. And it's our choices that we make that will either allow us to grow up into our purpose or fall short and live a less fulfilling life. So leave you with a couple of questions. What great thing would you accomplish if you knew you could not fail? This was written by someone named Anonymous, so I'm sure they won't mind if I change a few words. I believe it should be, what great purpose would you fulfill if you knew you could not fail? And to me, that idea of fulfilling your purpose is a, is a guidepost that gets me up every day. It's the lamp that takes me through even the most fog, uh, and it gets me to feel at the end of the day like I've left something uh, behind, a living legacy. And I call it uh, paying it backward on purpose. When I go to Starbucks, I'll often pay for the car behind me. And in that moment, bless someone who I don't know and they don't know me. Well, I can't pay for the car in front of me because they've already gone. So if you think about this idea of leaving a living legacy, is it paying it backward? Who can you pay it backward today and help you grow up into your purpose? So thank you very much for the time that uh, you've given me to share. I really hope we have some good questions and I'm looking forward to entertaining them now. Thank you so much, Mark, for such a great presentation. Um, <clears throat> to all of our attendees, we really appreciate you being here. So if you have any questions, please feel free to go ahead and put them into the Q&A box and I'll go ahead and answer as many as we can. Um, Mark, so the first one, um, actually comes from someone who works in marketing. So they've asked, you know, as a marketing services firm, they've always found it hard to define their purpose, right? They're not exactly in their eyes saving the world. Um, but how would you go about working towards a shared sense of purpose within an, an organization like that? That's a great question. And, and so many people uh, are hearing this idea of purpose and, and sometimes they're, they're inspired by it and, and sometimes they shrink from it because it sounds daunting, Right your purpose, as if it's a, a noun, as Chimp Conley would say, instead of a verb. So that's why I use the word purposeful, because I think a noun suggests that there is something tangible that we got to go find somewhere versus being purposeful allows you to say, hey, there's a long journey ahead of us. We're all growing into our purpose, right? So if you say, I help someone, that's an act that happened. But if you're helpful, that's part of your character. You see what I'm saying? So if you think about that team, you'd want to bring them together and find out what values do they share in common? What ways do they think they not only satisfy their clients, which is how they make their money, but maybe how do they give back some of that money to make their communities better or the world better? And how do they influence their clients in a way to do likewise? Because if you're on a marketing services agency, you're in the influence business. I spent half my career on that side, so I totally get it. So there's an opportunity for you to get together and really uh, determine what lights you up, what do you do better than anybody else, how do you make your money, and then what does the world need that you can fulfill? So you and I have also talked, Mark, a lot about leaving a living legacy, and I wanted to give you the opportunity to talk about how you are leaving your own living legacy as well. Could you go into a little bit more detail on that? Yeah, I um, put together uh, several years ago as a marketing person, um, my personal brand plan. 
And I came up with a purpose statement, which is, I don't want to just make money and retire. I want to make a difference and inspire. And that means making a difference in the lives of others and inspiring them to want to do likewise. And that's this virtuous cycle of reciprocity or what I call paying it backward. Because, you know, if I were just to take the, the career that I've had and ride off into the sunset, I feel like that would be criminal. I believe I was given a purpose, and that purpose is to see if I can help others along their growth journey by using my time, my talents, my treasures, and my triumphs and travails. A lot of that is uh, shared in the book, The Purposeful Growth Revolution. Um, I'm so aligned with conscious capitalism because I think we both stand for elevating you know, humanity through business, and what role can I play in that movement? Because we're, we're, we're only moving forward. We're not going backwards. You know, I don't believe people are going to go, well, let's just go back to that nine to five job I hated so much. They're going to say, hey, I kind of like this idea of freedom, flexibility, autonomy, um, control over my destiny, transparency, all those things that, that, that we're hearing in research that people didn't feel they had. I want to help be that force for good. And that's really what drives me and, and gets me up every day. Thank you for asking. Yeah, of course. Um, we kind of on a different tone. So someone has asked, you know, some of the research has been that millennials and Generation Z don't necessarily develop an emotional connection with the brands that they are purchasing in the same way as previous generations. Um, at the same time, many people are saying that customers tend to prefer brands that have a deep purpose. Can you kind of give your insight on why this is happening or why you think this phenomenon is happening? Yeah, I think um, I, I disagree, I guess, with the, the, the first part of the comment, because I do believe that young people today care deeply uh, and emotionally about brands they use. Try separating uh, your, uh, you know, I have 24, almost 25-year-old twin daughters. Try separating them from their iPhone. Um, you know, try try getting them to to not be on Spotify or uh, many of the other um, you know subscription services that they're they're part of, uh, and they care deeply about the things they care deeply about. Just like all of us, uh, we're all human beings. I don't think it's a generational thing, um, and and so this idea of you know uh, emotional attachment to brands matters. I mean. If I were going to go buy outdoor gear, it, 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 I would go to Patagonia, right? Because I feel like, you know, even if their gear itself was equal to uh, REI's or somebody else's, I would just feel like I'm supporting something that matters to me. And I think that's the same with all of us. And the studies that I've uh, indicated suggest that people will uh, switch from one brand to another and pay more for it if they feel a kinship to the same shared values of that organization. Appreciate that. So I think we've got time for one more question. So someone had asked, is there such a thing as too much growth? And they fear that the quest for growth can lead to companies making unconscious decisions that aren't as grounded in their values. So what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think that's a great question. And I think there's always going to be um, a worry of, of growing too fast. I don't think there's a worry of too much growth. I think it's more about the, the pacing and sequencing of the growth. You can get pretty far out over your skis uh, and, and really hit a, a home run with a product or service, uh, but not have built the foundation for growth to happen. So you go back to my leaf growth model. If you don't have a strong root system, you're not gonna be able to grow. Uh, the, the tree will be top heavy and it'll blow over in the wind. Um, so I think if the, the, the organization has a strong root system and a foundation to support sustainable uh, growth and not just grow so fast that uh, they lose their way and they get caught up maybe in, uh, well, now maybe it's time to sell it to someone and get out while I can and take the golden parachute. Yeah, there are people that do that every single day, but conscious companies don't. Conscious companies understand that they're in it for the long haul and that they want to be around for their uh, customers, their team members, all of their stakeholders, and make a lasting uh, positive impact on the world around them. And that's how you can separate the wheat from the chaff. 
I really, really appreciate that, Mark. Um, it, as always, just really appreciate your insight and your time with us. Um, thank you all so much for joining us today. If you have any other questions, feel free to go ahead and pop them in the chat. I'll be able to share them with Mark um, and, and we can do some follow-up as needed. But again, we really appreciate you spending your time with us. Um, if you want to have any further dialogue, you can uh, reach out to me on my website at markamears.com. Uh, there's a way for you to contact me. I'd love to keep this uh, conversation going, or you can hit me up on LinkedIn um, if you prefer. And uh, I want to learn from you. Uh, that's the, the part of growth uh, that I love is I don't know it all. And I love learning from people and getting different perspectives. So please feel free uh, to reach out to me. And if you're so inclined and, and you want to uh, buy the book, it's available on uh, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, whether it's an ebook or hardcover or softcover, um, would love to get your perspective on that as well. And then finally, there's a, um, a self-assessment on my website. So if you're kind of wondering where you are in this whole purposeful growth world, it takes about six, seven minutes to fill out, and then you'll be able to download your report right when you're done, and it will give you kind of your score on how you're doing in each of the four areas of growth that I outline. So it's kind of a companion to the book. And that's a good way to get the, 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 the process started and get you thinking about purposeful growth in your own life, as well as how aligned are you with your organization? And is it time to make a decision as to what you do with your life and your career if you're not aligned and if you don't feel like you can get there? So really important resources for you uh, to keep this conversation going. And I really appreciated uh, the time, Alexa. Uh, always a pleasure uh, to, to speak with you and uh, really a pleasure to speak with uh, those who are tuning in today or watching on replay. Well, I absolutely echo those sentiments for sure. Um, just a reminder to everyone too, last couple of reminders, if you could just please take 30 seconds to fill out the survey in the chat box to help us plan for our future programming and also share how much you enjoyed Mark's presentation. That would be very much appreciated. Um, if you're new to Conscious Capitalism, please also feel free to visit ConsciousCapitalism.org for more information about our movement and our organization. And finally, if you're an executive currently implementing conscious practices in your business, we invite you to explore our growing support system of like-valued leaders in our Conscious Capitalism Senior Leader Network. Mark is a part of that network. Um, you can visit ConsciousCapitalism.org slash senior dash leaders to learn more and join. Once again, thank you all for joining us today. We hope to see you at our next virtual event.